I've watched some of these before. I don't remember them being this hard. We don't expect you to have a knowledge of everything Yu-Gi-Oh, which is why I really go out of my way to make these questions a pain in the ass. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Do You Know Yu-Gi-Oh! And today we have our guest Joshua Smith, three-time YCS champion and Leone. So yeah. today what we are going to be doing is I'm going to be drawing from this deck cards. I will ask our two contestants questions and by the end of it we'll see who truly knows their Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge. Now Josh, you're proficient at the game. Mm -hmm. How is your Yu-Gi-Oh trivia knowledge? I'd hope it's pretty good because I, I really like these things whenever I come across them. Um, of course, it's not what I do most of the time, but I hope I know <laughs> a decent amount of these things. Leonie, your trivia is also yes, pretty good. I've seen the Yu-Gi-Oh anime at 3 a.m. and cried recently. What, what have you done? done? I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But if you're interested in seeing more of these kind of fun wacky game shows, let us know by liking and subscribing and commenting down below what you would like us to do in the future. If you guys are interested in also playing along with the images and the questions, you can also check it out in the link down below as we've included it on the Card Market Insight page for you guys to play along with. Are we ready for our first question? Let's go. Okay, so first question off the top of the deck. Josh, very competitive man. He's been around for quite a long time, so he should probably get this question. Which of these cards has never seen competitive play. Is it A, Gemini Garnet, B, Fusionist, C, Unifrog, or D, Brainjacker? <laughs> Somebody is very confident in their answer here, but we'll see, we'll find out. I have my answer, and if it's wrong, then you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see your answers. Taking it away in round one, Joshua Schmidt with the correct answer for Brainjacker. Unfortunately, only Gemini Garnet actually spawns like this whole kind of what category of card called Garnets in your deck. We because... do not talk about Gemini Garnet. <laughs> Fusionist was actually a card that saw play in a World Championship deck in Italy in 2014. Uh, it saw play in Infernity, uh, just as a good instant fusion target for level threes to make ranks. Question two. The Pot series is a series of powerful draw cards that pay homage to Pot of Greed, but with added costs. One of the most renowned cards is Pot of Prosperity. Which two pots are combined to make Pot of Prosperity? A, Pot of Greed and Pot of Avarice. B, Pot of Riches and Pot of Benevolence. C, Pot of Avarice and Pot of Acquisitiveness. Or D, Pot of Generosity and Pot of Riches. I have it narrowed down to two of the options. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's one of those two. You, you know what, I was, I was feeling pretty good, but then you said way more names than I <laughs> thought would appear. There were way more pot cards than I ever anticipated it to be. Do we at least have an answer? We have an answer. All right, okay, let us see those answers, please. Taking away no points this round is oh everyone, God. because the correct answer is Pot of Generosity and Pot of Riches. That was the two I was between. <laughs> I picked the wrong one. So moving on to our next question. Ah, yes. This is my favorite part of the game. I get to hand you guys some cards. Would you like to both take a card each, please? On this card I have given you, I have changed something about this card, and I would like you to tell me what I have changed about two toads, one sting. Now, why'd you pick this card? I don't know, why did I pick this card, <laughs> Frogman? I'm not sure. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I don't know what this card does, I just know it's not that good. I will give you a hint, I've taken something away. Oh, oh I thought it was just about the text. No, no, it's always, oh. it's usually oh, the image. No, no, it's yeah, just yeah. about the text, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you reveal your answers to the audience, please? Ooh, both very interesting options, and unfortunately it is not the correct answer for either of these. In the original card art, in the bottom left-hand corner behind Totally Awesome is another Treeborn Frog who is confused by the fact that he is currently ascending. <laughs> but where's Ronin's sword? It's missing. <laughs> he doesn't need it, he got banned, he's not allowed to play with sharp objects anymore. Okay, we did not have to, we didn't have to get personal like that. But... <laughs> Question four. Yu-Gi-Oh is no stranger to having a bunch of weird cards, including some cards that are just frustrating because they make calculating life points kind of difficult. So with that, how many monsters are in the TCG that have combined stats that are not divisible by 50? A, 6, B, 11, C, 4, or D, 8? I think of 1. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who are confused, in the earlier days of Yu-Gi-Oh, there were a lot of cards that had you know, stats that weren't necessarily ending in 500s. They ended in very weird kind of like 30s. The most notable is the antagonist Panic in the Dual Monsters series where he used a bunch of different monsters that got range stats when they came over and eventually got printed. 
We don't expect you to have like knowledge of everything Yu-Gi-Oh, which is why I really go out of my way to make these questions a pain in the ass. I've watched some of these before. I don't remember them being this hard. Do we have our answers for? Yes. Would you like to reveal them? Tying it up is Leone with the answer six. I actually have the list of the cards here. The list is Reaper of the Cards, Sword Arm of Dragon, Number S39 Utopia Prime with 2,510 attack, <laughs> Barrocks, King of Yami Makai, and Castle of Dark that, Illusions. That was the one I was thinking of. Castle of Dark Illusions? Yeah, that's yeah. the one I could think of. But... We're going to move on to our next question. This is a good one. I hate when he says that. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh's reprint policy helps newer players get into the game with stuff like the Megatons, helping to keep card prices low after a year or two. Some cards slip through the cracks. Which of these cards has yet to receive a reprint? A. Slime Toad B. Puny Penguin C. Dancing Elf or D. Metamorphosis I was hoping you would say uh, Nimble Sunfish. So we have our answers for this tricky little question. Another 50 50 for me, I'm sure I'm missing. Well, what was your 50 50? B or C, because A or D, I know have written. You won the 50 50, and unfortunately, you only missed out on this one. It is Dancing Elf. Slime Toad obviously has had a reprint because yes. it used to be Frog the Jam. Yes. Puny Penguin also only has two printing one which is an OTS printing, and one from, I think it's like Abyss Rise ages ago or something like that. It's a, a pretty old card, and Penguin players are screaming at the fact that uh, <laughs> they don't have this card. They are in shambles <laughs> right now. They're, they're in absolute shambles. <laughs> In just distraught. Dancing Elf. Dancing Elf is like a vanilla monster that has never seen any kind of play. And then D, Metamorphosis has had three reprints, but nothing recently and is actually quite expensive yeah. uh, considering it's had three reprints. It's currently like eight euro for any kind of good version. Metamorphosis unbanned question mark ever? Probably not. Okay. Let's just not do that. Oh, we could. We maybe very we good could, point. but we, maybe we should. So we're about halfway through the quiz now. How are we feeling? I have to guess way much than I <laughs> that I'm comfortable with. I I prefer answering questions when I know the answer. <laughs> we watch a lot of these things on like on stream, mm -hmm. so I know a couple of things. It's enough to eliminate one or two of the answers. Yeah, where I always I'm left guessing like 50-50s, but so I guess it could be worse. The 50-50s are what make it fun. Starlight rare cards are some of the highest rarity cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, and thus they are some of the most desirable due to their rarity. Appaloosa and IP Mascarena are some of the most expensive Starlights out there going for a thousand euro or more on card market. That's not what I'm asking. I want to know which of these Starlights is the least expensive. Is it A. Heavenly Zephyr Miradora? B. Leviathan Dragon? C. Black Wing Dragon? Or D. Book of Lunar Eclipse? I know how much Book of Lunar Eclipse is because I've recently looked it up. Heavenly Zephyr Miradora is from Blazing Vortex. You have Leviathan Dragon, which is from Brothers of Legend. Black Wing Dragon, which is from Darkwing Blast. And then you have Book of Lunar Eclipse, which is from Lightning Overdrive. So if I had a Miradora and you had a Book of Lunar Eclipse, would you be willing to trade <laughs> yeah. or not? Ah, yes, I see you do. <laughs> Just for context, these were the prices of the cheapest English cards I could find on card market circa February 2023. So don't come at me in the comments. Or do, let us know. We like engagement. Hit me with it, guys. Leonie pulls ahead, but just barely. These card prices are stupid. I personally don't understand why they are like this. Zephyr, cheapest I could find it, 64.97. Leviathan Dragon, 59.89. It's like the weird printing where it's not even in English. It's in like yeah, the that's weird. Yeah, I feel yeah. like that one was gonna be like more special because it feels kind of more iconic. Black Wing Dragon, eighty nine ninety nine. Really? Yeah. That's the newest one. I felt like it's that the newest was... one, but it is from Five uh, Ds, and people like Five Ds, and they also like Synchros, and it is an Ace Monster. And then Book of Lunar Eclipse was eighty two ninety. That's when I checked. Yeah, right. that's roughly what I remember when checking. We're breaking even a lot here. Coming to the point where like these points are starting to matter. So, are we ready to move on to our next question? Yes. Another one of my favorite kinds of questions where I take two cards off the top, and I'm giving you each a card, and I would like you to tell me what I have changed about this card. Is it, once again, just the artwork, or is it anywhere on the card? It could be anywhere on the card. 
Oh, you were so quick with ah. that. You were so quick with that. I'm really, really curious to figure out whether or not, like, you just sleep, you're right. Ooh, I like I, you really... though, because I really. Oh, because it's like, oh, that is so obvious, but. Um, it's... Imagine there's a number in the bottom left. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have changed. Actually, I have changed the passcode on the bottom left of the card. Weird ends on a three. Yeah. Like everyone Sorry, knows. guys. Reveal your answers, guys. Oh, he got it! He got it! That's Josh oh, taking God. it away. He noticed the soul change. It's not a dragon. It's not not a a dragon. dragon. I, I I've played this bit before and I've had rivalry of the world that's flipped against me, so I know this. Most people always just look at it and go, Albaz says it's a dragon, looks like a dragon. Why isn't it called the Ice Blade Worm then? I don't know. That doesn't sound as It's epic. not as cool as nah. the Ice Blade yeah. Dragon. Yeah, yeah. Our next question requires you guys to look at this image. And. I'm going to show you a sequence of four images. I want you to tell me what the card is. If you get the first image, you get three points. The second image, two points. The third image, one point. And if you don't get it by the final image, you're not getting any points for this round. Tell me what that card is. See, the, the weird thing is, I think I know which card it is, but I just don't know the name. You only get one choice and your time is ticking. You have five seconds to tell me before I move on to the next image. I'll take another zoom. All right, let's go, boom. Yeah, it's the one I thought, but I don't know the name, but that's not gonna... <laughs> I don't have a name! But that's not gonna... I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I gotta have a name, guys. Okay. Three... Wait, 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 no, 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 I, I want to answer. Oh, you want to answer? Yes. All right, Josh, this is your one answer, please. It's Petite Dragon. It is Petite Dragon! That was too... <laughs> what was it? I hate when you flip over the cards to get ready to hand them over. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when your opponent is... Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Off the top of the deck. Exactly. Wow. I want you to tell me what the character is that I have blurred out in this character. Character. <laughs> the character, yes. Uh. What season was he in? <laughs> I don't know if this goes in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> that, that investigation might be misleading. Let's not let the audience wait for too long. Reveal your answers. It's not wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> it is Cannon Soldier. It is 100% Cannon Soldier. Yes, 100%. <laughs> he is a robot. You know what? Just for the sheer gall that you have for putting down robot in a game where they're even just called machines. Yeah, you can have it. I'm gonna also <laughs> just. I'm just. Gonna, I'm gonna give you that point. <laughs> Our final question: Winners of World Championship Yu-Gi-Oh events win prize cards that are unavailable to the public. These cards are often quite expensive and in short supply and high demand. Which of these following cards is the most expensive? Is it A, E-Hero Pit Boss, B, Armament of the Lethal Lords, or C, King of Destruction, Zezix? When was the card last in For the sake of it, because you win on points anyway. Yeah. Hit us with your thought process. So I know Pit Boss is very sought after because it's the hero, but I think Pit Boss is also the only one out of these three where there's two copies because it was 2013 and there was already a Dragon Duel World Championship, which they I don't think they had up until like 2012 or 2013. And so they started giving out two sets of the prize cards, one for the normal World Championship and one for the the Dragon Duel. These days there's three or four sets because like Duel Links also yeah, gets yeah. them. And, this year, Master Duel is also going to get them, so there's like more, more copies. Um, but I'm pretty sure the ones from 2005 and 2006, there should only be one each. I'm just going to get those one, one of those. Which one was the one from 2005? 2005 Zezix? was, I believe, Zezix. Well, you should be a lot more confident than that. Because Zezix, on card market, is the most expensive card. Selling for 999,000 euro. Is listed on card market? Listed on card market. Then second listing, the Armament of the Little Lord, is listed for 699,000. By the same guy. It might be a collector who just has it. Very, very interesting collector. And then Ihira Fipa, surprisingly, the lowest, and by a huge margin. Two copies. 30,000. What? Supply and demand. I guess hey. nobody wants the hero pit boss. Nobody likes the heroes. But with that, we have our winner for today, and it is Joshua Smith. Josh, can I ask you a quick question? Was this better than winning the YCS? I'm, I'm gonna make you feel good and say yes. Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> but that is it from the card market team for today. If you played along, let us know how you did in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ding all the notifications and stuff like that. If you like seeing Josh on the channel, he's going to be around on the channel for the next while doing some more videos with us. So stay tuned for that. But until then, thank you all for watching and we'll see you all next time.